So I was raised Russian Orthodox Christian. I wasn't really raised in religion or faith per se. Like that was a label we carried, but we didn't practice Christianity really. I never re- read the Bible as a kid. In fact, I remember, I, I think my parents don't even know where this came from. I think they said someone gifted us a kid's Bible. Maybe it was one of my grandparents, but I remember they had set up like my room and my desk and it was on one of the shelves at my desk and I pulled it down and I tried to read it and I got confused and I got bored and I put it back. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That was my experience with the Bible. That was it. That was the only time I ever opened a Bible growing up. And we never really went to church except for select Easter and Christmas services, not even all of them. So I wasn't really raised in the faith. And if anything, my dad was very, very skeptical growing up. Um, He also carried the label of Orthodox Christian um, and he was baptized and such, but he didn't live any of it. And he was extremely skeptical about anything supernatural or spiritual. Right. And my mom was the exact opposite. She dabbled in everything. She I remember her like reading my palm growing up. She had a bunch of books on witchcraft. I remember later when, uh, so I'm from Russia originally, from Moscow, Russia. Later when we would visit on occasion, we would stay and in the apartment that I grew up in. Most of the time it was rented out, but sometimes it was available and we would stay there. And I was going through the books as like a 14 year old girl. I was a teenager. I was going through the books that she had there and there were some really weird things. There were like, magic spells where you take like a chicken it was just really weird yeah excessively witchy stuff that I don't remember her ever practicing anything like that but she had these books right Mm -hmm. so she was interested in astrology witchcrafts palmistry all of it all all the now new age stuff but the stuff has been around forever right the witchy stuff but yet she considered herself an orthodox christian exactly yeah I think and we were talking about this a little bit before we started recording, I think one of the issues in retrospect now that I see with Orthodox Christianity, I don't know as much if Catholicism covers this stuff. I know my husband is Catholic and in upbringing at least, um, and he stayed away from witchy stuff, but (laughs) I don't know. I think they also study the Bible a lot more, at least he did growing up. Like he knows the Bible better than I did, which is not at all. Yeah, that is something I wanted to ask you. It's like, because I see this, I married, um, my husband is Russian Christian Orthodox and um, he's got certain family members that are, you know, they're great people, amazing hearted. Um, They consider themselves Christians, but yet they think it's okay to like, read off the horoscopes and do all of these kinds of things. And so I remember asking you about that. Like, I think I asked you, I was like, do you think that's because religion was illegal in the Soviet Union? And so they just didn't get educated. And you kind of explained, you're like, oh, I think it's because just culturally, there's not a whole lot of Bible education in Eastern Orthodox religious traditions. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's both. I know that I brought this up to my parents, not exactly in this context, in the context of divination or witchcraft or anything, but in the context of, hey, my husband and I started going to church and they were like, what? And I talked about a Bible study and things like that, that I was a part of. And they shared with me, oh, they never really read the Bible. They never really studied the Bible. And they shared with me also that like they even had to get baptized in secret because they were growing up in the Soviet Union. So I think at least in their minds, and I'm sure if there's truth to this, it's partially that. It's partially the fact that it had to be secret, anything that you were participating in and when it comes to religion and faith. And also, uh, I'll go back to the conversation that I mentioned I had with you. Um, So I went to this other church nearby here as an adult, um, where the pastor and someone else in the leadership team come from a Greek Orthodox background. Mm -hmm. This church now goes line by line through the Bible, Mm -hmm. but they come from that background. And they both said, like related to my story in Russian Orthodox Christianity and said that they never opened the Bible growing up. They never studied it. Like you go to this service and there's this patriarch, I think is the best translation for what he's called. He's like, like a father in, in the priesthood and Catholicism. 
And he, they, they do these rituals. Like there's a lot of incense. There's a lot of, it sounds like chanting. I think it's singing. It's like very chanty singing <laughs> and it's very ritualistic. It's probably similar ish to a Catholic service, which I went to once. Um, but I would say even more tricked out. <laughs> yeah. So like you said, you didn't really go to church growing up. So, um, so you didn't really experience these churches, even though your family went by the title of Orthodox Christian. Yeah, I experienced these services a handful of times, like probably literally a handful, five or fewer times that I can remember. And I was baptized in the church when I was six, I think. Um, They wait till you're kind of an older kid, unlike I think the Catholic tradition, you go as soon as you can. (laughs) So I was baptized. I was taken to services very rarely, um, but it wasn't a regular part of our life. Okay. Okay, so I've been to um, the Ukrainian church services, the Greek Orthodox with my husband, and it's exactly how uh, you described it, where it's mostly like you listen to them like chant in like a kind of melody and church can go on for like three to four hours. And a lot of times you have to be standing like most of like, if it's like the real traditional one, you have to be standing. And I was not prepared for that. I wore heels my first time. Uh, and was in pain, but we also have a Greek Orthodox one where there's pews and you can sit, but it is like, it's a very internal service and you don't really know what they're singing. It's, it's pretty, but like, you don't really hear from the priest until the end. And he says like a 30 second or, you know, up to like five minute thing about what's new, or like, maybe he sends you with like a little tidbit. Um, But it's definitely not like the kind of Bible education or the teachings about Jesus or his life or anything like that, that we get in the non-denominational churches. So my husband and I were talking about that, like how if only we could combine the two, like the Bible education from our church, and then like the beautiful ritual and ceremony and tradition from his church and his culture, then that would be like perfect. (laughs) Yeah, my husband had a really hard time leaving behind the ritualistic ceremonial aspect of the Catholic mass as well. Mm -hmm. When we first started looking for churches about a year ago, we mostly looked at non-denominational Christian churches and they're all kind of like, as you know, like a big auditorium sort of space and like a concert and (laughs) all this. They're very modern for any of those who has, never been to one uh, but I think most churches now in America are kind of like that yeah so they're very different from this more traditional ritual based service and my husband had a really hard time approaching that non-denominational service as church mm-hmm. it, it seemed like so secular in a sense it seemed so modern and far removed from the service he was used to um, but now the more that we're in it and the more that we also study the Bible more in depth, we realize that actually some of those ceremonial approaches are unnecessary or because they kind of take away from the saved by grace through faith element. Mm -hmm. It's both the Orthodox and the Catholic faith have a lot more of a workspace mentality. And part of the service has to do with that. I definitely, I I know what you're talking about. And that was something like when I first started building my relationship with Jesus, I was like, what the heck? Like I was, I realized all the differences between religion and uh, relationship. And I almost kind of like was like judgy towards religion though. It kind of went in the, a dark kind of way. So, you know, luckily I married my husband who was able to sort of humble me personally a little bit to see an appreciation for the the rituals that his family does because I remember just being like okay not kind of like the same thing like none of this is you don't have to do this but I do feel like there is something beautiful in like remembering and like doing these things but those things don't equate to your goodness or to your salvation it's just like um nice to do over the years to remember to remember God to remember why but if you lose the why which i think is which i think happens a lot with these sort of traditional um 
religions, even from like, you know, traditional Jewish people to Orthodox to Catholics, a lot of times they forget the why altogether. And that goes back to that should be first and foremost, the relationship with Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. And I think one of the reasons the why gets lost is because we don't read the Bible in those religions. <laughs> so, so <circling> back. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly like you described your, I don't know if it's first or last, <laughs> first um, Ukrainian church service, mm-hmm. where even, and I don't know if they had it in Ukrainian or a mix of Ukrainian and English or only English. You, oftentimes these American um, Orthodox churches have a mix. Yeah, it was all in Ukrainian, my first okay. one. <laughs> <laughs> so. Even if you spoke Ukrainian, I, at least I can speak from my experience, they speak um, in most Russian Orthodox services, kind of an older Russian dialect. Mm-hmm. I, I don't understand anything they're saying. I speak Russian as my first language, and I still have no idea what's going on. I think if you go to them regularly and you like, study up on the ceremony maybe a little bit somehow, you can start to understand, but most people don't. Wow, so, that's Interesting. Because my husband, that's his first language too, is Russian. And I'll ask him, I'm like, what what are they saying? Can you translate? And he's like, I don't know what they're saying either. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So not only do we not get direct teaching in the service, we also oftentimes just don't know what's going on. We just yeah. stand there for several hours. It becomes a chore mm-hmm. unless you're really close to God. Because um, there are, we call them babushkas. They're these like, <laughs> yes. there are these older women um, who, at least when I was growing up, they would wear, they would cover their hair all the time, not just in church. In the Russian Orthodox tradition, it's it's expected for a woman to cover her hair and wear a long skirt. Yeah. Um, they're very traditional in that sense. But these women are so devout that they would keep their hair covered all the time, like out in public as well. Mm-hmm. And they're usually like those older generations. Like when I was little, they were old. So, yeah. and they're usually from more rural areas of Russia. So they're like less modern um, in their lifestyle in general. Yeah. I know exactly what you're, what you're talking about. Um, Yeah. I have to wear the head covering whenever I go with them to these churches too. So I feel like I've gotten so excited. I've kind of deviated from your (laughs) testimony because I have so many questions just about the Orthodox um, church and upbringing because of what I've seen uh, Mm -hmm. and joining forces with my husband's family. So I want to go back to, so this was like your upbringing. You went a handful of times. um, And then like, what was the next part? You guys moved to the States. Was that what happened next? Yeah. So when I was seven in 2003, we moved to the States. Um, Spiritually, religiously, that didn't change all that much. I said in my testimony that I recorded myself a little bit about how like maybe that was an excuse for why maybe we went less often to church, but I don't really know if we went less often. It was definitely an even smaller part of my life because my grandmother, my mom's mom specifically, was a little bit more in relationship with God. I don't think she ever read the Bible either, but she prayed. She spoke to God. She didn't pray before meals or anything like that, but like I... She spoke about God more than anyone else in my family ever. So whenever we walked by a church... And this is pretty typical um, in Russian Orthodox churches is to just go into a church, not during a service and pray. I think it's the same with the Catholic churches as well. Mm -hmm. So whenever we would walk by a church, we would oftentimes go in and how we did prayer at the time was we would like light a candle in front of an icon and, and pray. So my grandmother did that quite a bit. I think she had a stronger relationship than God with God than anyone else I knew. So with that distance, I lost that as well. So I think internally, I felt like there was this shift of even less faith and spiritual presence in my life. Um, But I think externally, in terms of what my parents did immediately, I don't think much changed. It was just, Mm -hmm. just as not part of our lives. 